Hey everyone, this is George Gross, and welcome back to a brand new season of the Innovators Mindset Podcast. And this is the first episode of the year. It should be dropping January 7th. And that's very intentional. And it's just you and I. No music, nothing. And when I say it's just you and I, you might be actually listening to this as I'm running the Disney Marathon. I'm going to tell you, I've been working up to this for a while. I'm nervous about it and really kind of sharing um, the process. And it's kind of funny because people are like, oh, we talk about is marathon stuff. But if I just show the race, then sometimes we just kind of complain that people are like, oh, how did you get there and blah, blah, blah. So I'm trying to document and kind of highlight. And this is really about learning, really learning about who I am, uh, my process, myself. When you go out on a run and you spend time with yourself and there's no one else there, you learn a lot about who you are, what your, beliefs are, what your beliefs are, what your purpose is. And I can tell you that really dedicating myself over this time has pushed me in a way that um, I have not felt in a time. And uh, there's been a lot of downs through this and a lot of ups. And I've learned through the process that kind of stumbling through it, having some struggles, some injuries, some setbacks, has really trained my mind to understand that everything is temporary. The negative stuff, the good stuff, whatever it is, is temporary. And it's not like if you have a negative situation that a good situation won't replace it and vice versa. And it just kind of rotates off and on. And the hope is that we just have way more time with the good stuff than the bad stuff. But the bad stuff always comes, so does the good stuff. And I've really kind of learned that. One of the books I was reading, I cannot uh, remember it off the top of my head. I'm pretty sure it's titled Run the Mile You're In. It's been really helpful for me. And one of the things that it's taught me and it's really helped me as I'm training and who knows what's going on right now. I could be um, turning on my own podcast as I run this race because I like to listen to podcasts, hear thinking, and maybe I'm cheering myself on. And maybe this is a reminder to myself, but I hope that this helps someone else. When you run massive long distances, it is more of a mental barrier than a physical barrier. And it's not that the physical stuff doesn't start to take over, that you don't start to ache and feel really, really sore, but it's kind of getting through the pain. And how do you kind of deal with it where you go through the pain? And it's weird because sometimes I'll actually be running these incredibly long distances and something will actually go, whether it's my foot, whether it's a knee, whether it's my shoulder. And I've learned that eventually I won't think about that pain because some other pain will take over. So it's kind of learning through that and kind of getting through that process. But when I read that book, Run the Mile You're In, one of the things that they said is when you are struggling with pain, one of the best ways to deal with it in the moment is not to actually focus on the pain, but focus on things that have brought you joy. Focus on not what you're running from, but what you're running toward. And why I really appreciated that advice is I think of my son Marino when he sees me first thing in the morning, he runs to me. And when I'm really struggling, when I'm really having a hard time, I picture him saying dada. And he says it really funny. And running toward me. And I started to think about that when I'm starting to struggling. And it's interesting because not only do I get through the pain, I feel like a jolt of energy that comes, you know, through my body when I'm doing this. And it's been really, really helpful. And uh, I just think about that, how that doesn't just pertain to running. And that's why I'm really kind of been sharing this process is, is a learning process about yourself, about kind of going through challenges taking risks, trying different things. And that's a lesson that I've learned to apply in my running that will actually just go over to other aspects of my life. So I thought it was really, really helpful. And so I want to keep this podcast really short, um, just to kind of start off the year. And it's weird because I haven't really, uh, typically I would have like all my January, all my February ready to go with all my guests, but I've actually just kind of pulled away just from doing podcasts, from interviews over the last little while, because I just want to kind of focus and just kind of be in my own brain. And I don't know if I want to say limit my interaction, but maybe limit my interaction, not with people, but just, I guess, talking about education, focusing on all this stuff, because I just want to kind of, I want to learn more about myself. And it's been really, really helpful. So there are going to be guests. I do have some podcasts coming up. 
uh, that I've kind of been doing. And there's going to be, you know, I promise you, podcast every Sunday, every Thursday, whether it's me or with other people. But I've just taken some time to just relax and chill and enjoy this process, as horrible as it's been, but to enjoy it. But I also wanted to just share something maybe to help you start off the year. And today I actually saw something and I reshared it on Instagram. And it was just a simple post and you can see it if you're watching on YouTube. But it's a, a post and I don't know who it is initially attributed to. That's the thing with, you know, Instagram memes. Uh, someone will write something and then they'll take the author out and then they'll get credit for it. And maybe this is this person's or this account's. I don't know. I just want you to know it's not mine. So I don't want any credit for it. Um, but this is from the account at the positive minds and I'll link that down below. And it simply uh, says this and I, I thought this was a great way to start the year. So, so far, I've learned three lessons this year. To leave people where they're at, accept, situ accept situations for what, where, what they are, and not every action needs a reaction. And I thought it was really powerful, but this has really been kind of something I've been going through over the last few, year, uh, few years, for sure. And I thought this is really applicable. So I'm just going to give you three kind of just ideas, thoughts, something that kind of stuck with me in this specifically. So let's go backwards here. And so the first one, not every action needs a reaction. I have a very good friend, someone I really admire. And her and I were having a conversation and she saw something that was kind of, you know, taking shots at me or whatever. And I told her, well, actually I didn't tell her anything. She, 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 she's such a good friend. She wanted to stick up for me without kind of, and she tried to like comment to this person. I said, why would you do this? Why would you do this? Because that person is actually never going to change your view. There's nothing that all of a sudden they're going to say, you're right. And it was just kind of a ridiculous comment, whatever. And sometimes we feel that when we be wronged, when something doesn't go our way, we have to say something, we have to stand up to it. And sometimes that is true. Sometimes you got to do that. And I agree with that. But I try to think a little bit ahead of time. And I feel sometimes I just go, if I jump into this conversation, if I actually kind of push back on this person, is it going to change their thinking or are they kind of stuck? And I'll give you a, a, a kind of a, an education related thought process on this. I used to really try to, when I was doing professional learning opportunities, I would meet these people, total strangers to me. And you get into these kind of back and forth, someone's telling you, you're wrong because of this and this and this and this. And May, I don't know if it's like agree to disagree, but I would kind of, you know, be going back and forth with them and I could feel in the room a bunch of people sitting there thinking the person he's talking to doesn't want to learn and we're all eager to go and this is what he's wasting his time doing. So what I've learned over the past few years is that sometimes just going, okay, and just moving on to people who want to benefit where your energy is going to actually do something good. If I feel that I'm going to put my energy into something that's not going to change any person's mind, is not really going to necessarily help anyone else that sees in the periphery, I don't waste my time with it. And I think it's something that's really um, kind of going on in the world. Maybe it's politically, maybe it's educationally, is that we try to convince people that don't necessarily want to be convinced through our words, when the best way to actually use that energy is to be what you hope to see in others. That's it. So this idea of not every action needs a reaction, I don't think it means you always ignore, you just kind of move on. I just feel, what's my energy gonna do? Is it gonna be returned to me? Is this gonna actually improve anything in this relationship, in this conversation? And is there a way I could better spend my time? That's it. And so I've learned, Really just kind of sometimes, you know, someone says something, you know, like, all right. And then I just walk away and spend my energy elsewhere because um, there's only so many hours in the day. There's only so much energy any person has. So how do you spend yours? Something to think about. The second one, to accept situations for what they are. One of my favorite books that I read last year was a book from Trevor, Trevor Moad. And it's uh, Getting to Neutral Thinking, something along the lines. I'll, I'll link that down below as well. And it's... It's, it's really kind of pushed my thing because I, I like to see myself as a really positive person, someone who really looks for opportunities, looks for challenges um, and sees an opportunity. And sometimes people, you know, talk about toxic positivity. 
And if we're being honest, and I've said this a ton already, and if you listen to this podcast, I think negativity is often, if someone's really optimistic, you don't necessarily know why they're doing it. Sometimes I know that I could be a very positive person because I know that if I get into a negative spiral, it could really be bad for me mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. So I try to look not necessarily at the bright side, but at the opportunity, right? Sometimes there's no bright side, but I'll give you an example. I hurt my leg really, really bad. And I'm not just like, yeah, yeah, I hurt my leg. No, oh, okay, I get tox positivity, I get it. But what I looked at when that situation happened is, okay, so this is not a good situation. How do I figure this out through this running? What I'm gonna do to get through this and what will I adapt because of this moving forward? So now at 48 years old, I stretch every single time because of that one injury, because I'm trying to prepare myself for the future to not go through that injury. And it, going back to, to the last one, I always think about how I spend my energy. And I used to think, well, you know, I don't want to spend my energy stretching, but then you actually, then I actually was getting hurt because I wasn't spending that time. And so I was thinking about being proactive. So as much as the injury sucked, I wasn't yay injury. I looked at it as an opportunity to actually learn. And that's what really pushed me with the Trevor Moad book is to kind of think about um, just this idea of what's the next best thing I can do in this situation. So the situation sucks. What's the next best thing I do? What's the thing I can do moving forward? And it's not necessarily in his, his argument and, and Moad has since passed away um, since he wrote this. And he actually passed away from cancer, which is really fascinating in the book. He talks about kind of how he had to deal with that and, you know, how he was even dealing with struggling with his own way of thinking because of that situation. But really, it was, that's what made it really, really just kind of looking at what's the situation, what can I do to move forward to get better? And it's not saying his mentality is it's not saying a situation is good or bad. The situation is a situation. And really in education, in our personal lives, looking at everything as an opportunity to learn, whether it's from success or from failure, that's the best way to be. And I, I just wrote a very long post talking about this, that the most important thing we can actually teach our kids to teach our students is how to learn. Not any content, just having the ability to learn so that no matter what comes their way, they can figure it out. And so that idea of accept situations for what they are is not just kind of accept them and ignore them. It's accept this is the situation. What's the next best thing moving forward? How do I, you know, take, grow because of this? That's really kind of helped me. And so the last one, to leave people where they're at. Really good test of this is to think about when you interact with somebody, what is your energy after they leave that space? Whether it's a room, whether it's at work, do you feel better? Do you feel worse? And I can tell you 100% there's people I interact with all the time that I'm not batting a thousand on they feel better after they interact with me. You know, sometimes I don't have my best days. Sometimes they don't have their best days and you kind of feel crappy, but I'm talking about a consistent feeling. What's the consistent feeling that you have when you are around specific people, whether it's colleagues, whether it's family, whether it's friends and to basically just understand how you feel and what that brings to your next interaction. So let's say someone really kind of makes you feel crappy, feels bad. When you have that situation and you feel bad, then you go interact with other people. How do you think you make the next, the next interaction feel? And so I've learned that I just kind of going back to the other one, not every action needs a reaction. Not every person should get my time. And I, I, there was a, who I was mentoring and I was, um, he's younger and he's, he's, you know, I, I mentor people oftentimes based not on the things I've done well in the past, but the things I've screwed up and I wish I could go back in time and, and do differently. And, uh, it was interesting because I was giving him a lot of advice that he was really listening to and totally ignoring. And then every time he ignored it, he had issues. So basically I just kind of said, Hey, you got to figure this out yourself. Like I'm spending a lot of my time giving you this energy, giving you advice, you ignore it, you get in a bad situation. And then you got asked me to kind of help you bail you out of the situation. So I just kind of stopped talking to him and, uh, it's not, he's a bad person and it's not, I'm a good person, by the way. I don't, I don't want, it's, I hate that. Like when someone makes you feel bad after you talk to him, 
it's a mutual thing sometimes, you know, like I don't want anyone thinking that I think this is kind of the binary thinking that we often have is that if you make me feel worse, it's because, you know, you're bad. I'm good. It's not that way at all. If anyone, there's tons of people that have taught or currently teach listening to this. Sometimes you just don't get along with students. It's not their bad kids. And it's not your bad teacher. You just don't get along. And uh, I'll tell you a quick aside story. There is a, there is a student I had. I'm friends with her to this day. And uh, she was a brat in my class. She was a pain. She was really, you know, just really a brat. And uh, this is way back in the day when we were doing attitude marks and all that stuff there. And I remember that one of the things I did is attitude. And she had a terrible attitude. So I, you know, I think I gave her like three out of 10 or something like that. And she was so academically gifted that her grades in my math class were just just the best but her attitude so I just that was my way of kind of punishing her and I remember her mom coming in to parent teacher interviews at the time and saying to me um how come my daughter doesn't like basically have like a hundred percent in your class I know she knows all this math I said well she, to be honest with you she had a bad attitude and and the mom looked at me and said only with you and I was like what me and I, that's what I legitimately thought. And then I actually started talking to other teachers. And they're like, no, she's awesome. And then I was like, oh, it's just me. It's just something between us. And that's the kind of funny, funny thing. Um, sometimes you just kind of leave things. And then eventually, you know, um, she was really into basketball. I was into basketball. And we, you know, we got along later, you know. And uh, eventually became friends as she, you know, went into adulthood. And it's kind of just a funny thing. And so, like I said, it's not someone's good, someone's bad, or vice versa. It's just, just, just not that connection. And to kind of understand that is an important aspect. And I think that sometimes uh, just kind of separating spaces, kind of moving on from people, sometimes that's better for you. And if it's kind of meant to be, they'll come back. And they might come back a different version, you know? And the reason I tell that story is that... Um, the friend I was mentoring, he came back and said, you know what? I've done a lot of thinking. I haven't talked to you in a long time. And yeah, I've really taken a lot of your advice to heart and I've, life has, you know, improved because of it. And so I just wanted to reach out and let you know that. And I hope we can kind of connect again. We've been connecting and it's been great. And so sometimes you just got to kind of separate and it might be permanent, it might be temporary, but for me, all this is about energy and how do I become my best self? And I'm not big on like, I don't want to do this because it's 2024. This is the first podcast you're listening to. Any of that stuff. This is a habit. This is not about, you won't hear me talking about, here's my resolutions for the year. I think the best thing that I try to do for myself is to kind of look back to continuously move forward, to constantly tweak and look at how I can make things better and really kind of focusing on the things that bring you joy, the things that elevate you, that make you better so you can help others become better, that's where you gotta put your energy. So those three lessons, to leave people where they're at, accept situations where they are, and not every action needs a reaction. I thought it was a really good summary, and it was just kind of prompted some of my head, so I decided to turn on my camera, even while I'm wearing my Randy Macho Man Savage, old school WWF, not WWE, WWF uh, jersey. I thought it was kind of appropriate. So anyways, um, I hope you have a wonderful year. I hope you got something out of this. I'd love to hear from you. And uh, I hope you have an amazing 2024. 20, and I hope in some way this has helped you because me just sitting down talking to you, sharing just some insights off the top of my head, kind of thinking about my own stories and how I can get better really helps me. So all the best to you. I'll see you soon. Take care.